All right, so we've got the chassis flipped over, and I've already done a little bit of prep work. We're going to do these one by one for the most part here. So we're going to start at the power supply end of the radio. So we have this bake light block right here that we're going to pull. I have preemptively unsoldered the connections to the original internal capacitors. You can see they're just kind of sitting here. Unlike modern ones that have these nice solid leads like that, the capacitors in these blocks are actually uh, twisted, uh, stranded wire, very thin gauge, and they're simply wrapped around these posts that stick up out of here. So it was pretty simple to gently unravel them with the tip of the soldering iron. In some cases, they're so flimsy they'll just break clean off. So usually not that hard. And then I used a uh, one is it a one eighth or one? No, this is a one quarter drive screwdriver, and I undid this screw here from the chassis. So we can just take that out. Now there is a uh, external tooth locking washer underneath this. We make sure we won't don't lose that. So I'm gonna grab that now. And you can see this one. We have a fair amount of movement with it. So much so that we can simply flip it all the way upside down without damaging any of the existing wiring. We can see the block down there. It's actually kind of squishy. Uh, I, I mean, heck, I worked on the. Uh, I disconnected the capacitors yesterday, so I'm surprised that it's still somewhat soft. Uh, now what I'm going to do is grab my heat gun, set it on low because I'm on a shared circuit breaker and there's a very good chance I could actually pop it with all the stuff that's on this floor of the house right now. So be careful with that and we're going to try and melt all this out, but I also need to put something under here to catch all of the junk. That's going to come out of it, so I'm going to tuck some paper towel in there, just in case. Now, as far as getting this stuff out of it goes, um, there are some fancy picks and tools that you could probably use, but I have had just fine luck using a conventional flat blade screwdriver. Nothing really big. So, I'm going to go ahead turn this on. Now I've got the bottom pretty soft there. You can see it start to change. It's had a kind of turns glossy on there. Let's see if we can't gently jab our friend in here. Yeah, I might have to go just a little bit longer in order to get it really, really soft. Yeah, okay, now it's starting to pour out of there pretty good. And it should be pretty obvious, you don't want any of this to get on your hands or anything, so just be careful. Now I can actually see the original caps buried in here. Let's see if we can see it's just under here. It's a little wrapped up paper foil guy. That's one of them though. This this package uh, contains 2.015 microfarad capacitors. However, they cannot both be replaced with standard uh, film caps or what. Well, they both can't be the same style of capacitor because one of them goes from the primary side of the power transformer to chassis ground and the other is part of the B plus circuit. So obviously the one going to the power supply uh, to the transformer has to be a safety uh, line capacitor to prevent damage. Let's see if we can dig this out. Ah. Nope, right, I have to get back in there with the gun. Alright then, let's dispose of this junk first. Some people do like to use pick tools and they go in from these holes on the top here and just shove downward. I don't have anything small enough to do that, unfortunately. 
So I am doing it the slightly more tedious way. <sighs> yeah, it's a fair amount of smoke. Yeah, and the bake light block is going to start warming up pretty good now. I think we're getting it to budge. Yeah. Come on. Try not to burn ourselves at the same time. Get this. There's one of them. And just a moment here, we'll have number two. There we are. Now the uh, other terminal appears to have broken off of that capacitor, so yeah, these are these are just little paper foil fellas, so they come apart pretty easily. I've yeah, actually got uh, numbers on them. I don't remember if these have the the, uh, the values on them or not. But we'll go ahead and get those out of there. And then let's see what we've got left on the inside for space. There's still some junk on there. And we need to have clear access to the holes in order to get the new parts in. So let's go ahead and just dig the rest of this out. Get it out of there. So we have a nice clean starting point. And I suppose you could get meticulously clean with this if you really wanted to, but once there's enough room for both of these caps to go in there and they don't take much, you don't need to get too crazy with it. Now it looks like these wires are still trapped up in there. Possibly there was a little bit of the goop up in the holes that they were. I'm gonna see if I can't just yank them out with my hemostat here. Well, I got the larger ends, but I did not get the wiring. That was not quite. There we go. Ah, uh, yeah, the solder huh, on both ends is foiling my attempts to collect it all out of there. we go. All right. So that's all of that. Get a little bit more of this out of there. Junk and throw it away. Now I'll probably end up with a little bit of debris on the chassis, but we can just flip it over and toss all that off. It'll be good. Okay, so that's out. And we can use one of our component leads here. Just kind of poke these through to clear them out. Like that. And now we are ready to install our safety line capacitor. This is a 0.015Y2 type and an ordinary 0.015 uh, film cap or whatever you happen to want to use. I am leaving this uh, wire wound resistor here as it is. It still measures exactly what it should. Which I believe is about 325 ohms? Yeah. All right, so the 0.015 that connects to ground is also tied to this resistor. And since this is our ground lug, they are in parallel with each other, so our 0.015 standard film cap needs to go between this outermost terminal and this outermost terminal. So we'll stick that one in there first. Now actually, this one has shorter leads, our, uh, our safety cap. And uh, one of our power line connections to the transformer is right here. So we'll put that in place first, simply because of space limitations. So I'll get that up in there. Let's see if I got that on camera all right. Yep. That's fine. And then we'll take our friend here and go through that hole. Probably hard to see. I apologize. Let's see if I can get some more light in there. I don't think that's helping much. Feed that one through. And then once our leads are through, flip it over. And we've got those sticking out there. We can pull them in. We don't need to get 
too crazy with that. If we leave a little bit of slack, that's all right. And what I'm going to do is, now that I have those like that, I'm going to put the screw and washer back in place. So I'll feed that through there, put the star washer back on it, set that right there, and screw it down. It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, I know, it's, it's really not. And then, gently wrap the leads around the terminals like the old ones had. I think I just hit the camera, my bad. Yeah, oh, I'm corrupt the hemostat there. Come on. Now you could just put a solder blob on the top here, but I like to have a slightly more solid connection, something to at least tie off to. There we are. And then this one needs to attach here as well. There we go. Ta-da! All right, now well, we'll fire up the uh, soldering iron there, and I don't actually have any solder with me, so we'll just call this one uh, done. So yes, that was, uh, this is capacitor 32. I don't think I mentioned that. This is capacitor 32, and I'll make sure to show the uh, picture and the schematic again. So this is the, this is the B+. 0.015 and the primary transformer uh, uh, line uh, safety cap replaced. Now I looked at the schematic again and I realized the only times that they use the same number for capacitors is if they are the same value and there's only two instances of that in this set. So we have this one which has 2.015s and then we also have, take a look at the schematic here, uh, capacitor 10 which is this block. This contains 2.019, or 2.09s. We'll replace those with uh, 0.1s, because it's close enough. These other two, however, uh, do contain, so let's see, this block contains capacitors 21 and 25, and this one contains capacitor 27. So they're a little over the place. You can actually tell which ones contain more than one component because except this center terminal has nothing attached to it. And uh, that's off camera, that was stupid. We'll get to that later. So that's ready. I'm gonna screw that down, I'll solder it off camera, and then we'll move on to the next block. All right, let's see how easy this is to capture. So now we are working on this guy. This is capacitor 10, or capacitors 10, so the, the 2.09s that are in between the uh, second detector and output tubes. So, taking a look at it, I believe both of these are referenced to ground, and yes they are. So, uh, mercifully that means each capacitor, which in this case I am replacing them with 0.1s, and I just happen to have these nice little uh, rectangular guys that take up a lot less space than the film caps I have for this, so it'll be easy to plunk one in there, or like that, and then another one going in there, so. Now the only hindrance with this is there's a short wire going from this lug to this 36 tube base, so now that I've got it unscrewed, I really don't have a lot of movement freedom with it, however, I think we can get around that by detaching this resistor lead. Um, and now I'm not sure if I just want to clip it off or if I actually want to... Well, actually, yeah, I do, because this one right here I know has drifted, so we're just going to cut our losses. I know where that goes. I have pictures, so... Yeah, that's another thing. When you're doing work like this, make sure to take photos, so if you ever unwire anything, you you ever have some idea where it goes. So now we should be able to lift this up and yeah, now we have access to that. The 
again, same procedure as before. I mean, it is easier if you just pull them out and then you've got like a plate or something you can empty this junk on. But uh, yeah, I'm not doing that. All right, let's see what we got. This time, however, uh, I'm gonna hold on to this thing with a pair of pliers instead of just scalding myself again. And get right up in there and whoop, lose my grip. I think we should be able to get, hey, look at that. And the whole thing comes out. Of course, it helps that there's more capacitor than tar in there in this case. But yeah, look at that. That was a snap. And we can just... Uh... Come on. Well, that's one. It actually looks like there's a... Uh, the label was... Uh, it's a red label, interestingly. Hmm. Let's see. But yeah, that uh, block right there was really all he had to deal with. Let's see if these out. Whoop. Still a little bit gooey. This is got a big. I'm, sh I'm sure this is an internal Philco reference number for this capacitor. There's just a large 23 on it. I think the other one is, uh, yeah, same. Interesting, but not not really relevant anymore. That big light block is really warm. Another thing that might actually help this whole uh, deal is having the chassis vertical instead of uh, laying it down like this. I just remember there are those great big open spaces underneath here where the uh, coils are. Try not to drop any junk in those. Alright, and then we should be able to grab the other end of this wire up here. Get it out. Here we go. Okay, make sure we don't need to do any additional cleaning. Get some stuff away from all three holes so we know where we're going. Okay, and carefully. Well, maybe not too carefully. We're going to lose some of it. Oh well. Can't win them all. Yeah, let's just uh, let's just go like this. Very scientific approach. All right, cleared outside, plenty of space. A little bit of goo left in there, but it doesn't really matter. And we're just going to stick our first capacitor in there, like that. And our second capacitor in there. One lead to the ground post up at the top. And the other lead to the other end, slider all the way in. And then flip it back over. Oh, and uh, because our the little star washer was... Yeah, there, finally popped off. Pretty well glued to that from that tar. We can rebend some of these parts so that they go back in place. Give this a twist or two so that it sits still. Oop, 
Sorry about that. And yeah, there we go. Then rinse and repeat. Go ahead and reattach that. And reattach that. Now, for whatever reason, this one only has uh, one position for uh, attaching wires to the ground lug. This guy over here actually had two. I don't know why that is. Uh, it kind of would have been handy if they'd done two in this case. Oh well. There. Alright, that's that. It's uh, two down, two to go, and then the uh, electrolytics and then all the resistors, obviously, so. Not quite done, but that'll... That should definitely improve things. Uh, I have actually done a little bit of testing on this when I got my uh, replacement transformer from Antique Light, or Tubes and More. It does work if I inject audio, but uh, no reception. There could be a myriad of things wrong with it, so we're going to do this first, and then I'll fiddle with the rest of it. Okay, next on the list of capacitors to restuff is number 27, which I've already unscrewed right here, and unsoldered the leads. This is just one capacitor all by itself. The center lug on this block is being used as a, uh, a tie point, so there's no solder on it. It should be relatively clean, except for this end that they're branching off of. Uh, this is a .006. Uh, my capacitor kit just happens to have one of those in there, although I think you could probably get away with using like a .05 or a .047 uh, if you don't have one of those. Uh, this guy has a few things attached to it that are making it a little difficult to prop up, but I think I can probably manage at this angle. And let me find some of the stuff under there so it doesn't make a mess, or too much of a mess. There we go. Okay, but it looks like the uh, tar is poking out just a little bit. It is soft. Let's get in there with the pliers and see if we can't make this work. This would probably be easier if my heat gun had one of those fancy nozzles on it, like the one I have at work. But, uh, this Wagner did not come with anything like that at all. Unfortunately. I can see the original cap tucked up in there. Oh, shit. Apologies, and we just took a small chunk out of the side, so Bakelite might be tough, but it is not invincible as I've just now proven Good thing this isn't super valuable Still hate to hate to damage these at all I think we're going to have to use a little more heat because the stuff further up in there is not relenting. Uh, we're just going to have to try and... Never mind the smoke. That's normal. Okay, there we go. Trying to get as much of this crap out as possible. Alright, 
So there's that. I love the uh, sort of uh, ho-ho style rolled up assembly. These are done in. Now the question is how are we going to fish out all this junk? Yeah. Always thinking one step ahead, right? And everything in here is rather warm. Okay. Just get rid of all this junk. Grab our cap. And shove it up into the outermost two holes. Let's rotate this back down. And should hopefully be able to wrap this wire around that post, hold steady, and then do the same on that end, like that. Drop our screw back here and to keep it from going anywhere. There we go. All right, so that is number 27. Uh, this capacitor is actually in the output of the 42 tube. I believe it couples between well, it goes through uh, resistor number 26, which is supposed to be about 500 kilo, 490 kilo ohms, and that goes between the plate and grid on the 42 tube. And I think that's about it for that one. I'll get that soldered in, and then we're going to move over to the last guy, which is number 25 and 21. All right, and last but not least, we have uh, this block here, which contains capacitors 21 and 25. Uh, capacitor 21 connects between ground and this middle lug here, while 25 connects between this lug and the center. 25, that is actually, um, or no, sorry, I've got that, uh, I think I've got that just a bit backwards. Sorry, I'm trying to look at the schematic and look at these at the same time. So obviously we know that one of them connects to ground. 21 is grounded at one end and then goes and connects to a resistive divider, which is this. Whereas uh, resistor 25 connects between uh, this here, actually. It goes uh, through this resistor. This actually goes over to 27, which I believe that is resistor 26 down in there. So this lug right here, and then the two of them are going to wind up joining up at uh, this point here, which contains these two resistors, which are supposed to be 10,000 and about 240,000 ohms. So we need to get the 0.001, which is capacitor 21, between this terminal here at the end with the ground lug, and this terminal all the way up here. And then resistor 25, which is a 0.015 microfarad between the center lug and this end lug here. So, go ahead and... This one, because of all the wiring and everything that's attached to it, I can actually gently lift it up this way. I'm not getting too worried about damaging the resistors because they're all going to go anyway. And then... Can we even see that? Sort of. It's one of those things you do it enough times it just gets boring. I'll probably just fast forward through most of this. Tuck that in there. Give it a moment to cool down. You know, it's a good thing I don't have a smoke detector in this room. Well, maybe not a good thing, but uh, it's handy. All right, so one of these is already located at the bottom. And here it comes. 
boing. All right, there's that. And Other fella is just right there. And yes, actually this, this is our point oh one. He is attached to the outer two most terminals. Okay. So there's all that goop. You gotta make some good room in here for those new parts. And I think we can take this out of here. Let's see how we did in there. That's ah, not too bad. I'll shine a light in that. Yeah, it's a little dirty. Let's keep a little more of that out in places. You can get get picky with this and clean the whole thing out if you really want to, but I don't think it's worth it. Okay. So, we need to get this one in. Through there like that. And then, before we finish it up, we need to get the point 0.015 in to the middle and top terminal. Come on now. There we go. And then we'll stick those through there. And I uh, should probably collect some of this garbage before I screw it back down. Alright, that's pretty good. Just kind of squish that in there. Easy. Yes, this is still pretty warm. screw down in here and keep this from walking away on me while I try to that is apologies it's right in front of the camera all right that's tied down That's tied down. And all my tools have little bits of tar on them, which is just great. Back. There are from what I've seen, probably a little more effective methods when you're doing this uh, involving tools, picks poked down into these holes to shove the block and materials out through the top. Probably a better way than just digging it out the way I did, but you work with what you got and I don't have anything small enough to fit in there. And yeah, that should do it. Um, before I replace all the resistors and everything, I have the speaker mounted up with this new transformer and the wiring, and I want to do a quick test to make sure that is all correct. So once I finish up the soldering connections, I'm going to hook up a temporary power cord, make sure everything here is more or less connected okay, and we're going to see how the new speaker uh, setup does. Alright, so here is my craptacular test setup. Uh, Thank you, Fridge, for starting up just now while I'm trying to record. Got the chassis hooked up to a Variac through the line cord. I know it's at an angle, but it's just so I can keep an eye on the electrolytics. They have been running cool, and I've tested them. We've got the voltmeter hooked up to the uh, first capacitor in the circuit. We've got my new Antique Electronic Supply PT291 uh, hooked up on there correctly. It's not perfect, it's a little more colorful than I would have liked considering the vintage of the set, but it's good. I've got the cone on this speaker patched and painted in a few areas that it was having trouble with. 
And uh, yeah, let's see if this actually does well. Hopefully the fluorescent lighting and my fridge cycling doesn't cause too many problems. I am also going to inject a signal through the detector tube because this set probably will not receive anything. Uh, that's what I'm betting on. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this on, kick the Variac in, and then gently bring it up. I'm at 40 volts on the Variac, or 40% uh, anyway. Okay, bring it to 50. B plus is gently picking up, and I can see the dial lamp illuminating a little bit. Got about 100 volts plus on B plus. All right, so we're not likely to get anything there. As I would kind of figure. But what I want to see is if my circuit is actually going to all the places it should. I think I can hear something coming out of the speaker, but it's extremely faint. I don't know why I'm bothering with the volume control, because this, <laughs> the volume control, I think, just controls the uh, antenna antenna uh, attenuation. All right, I think that's a pretty decent test, as it is. So, we do have a functioning speaker. We know the wiring works. Let me see. Yeah, I'm amazed at how well these capacitors have held up over all these years. Those may be period replacements, but everything in them is very clean. Either way, uh, we know the B-plus circuit's working okay before our capacitor change. We know we're at least getting audio from the detector tube to the 42 tube and out to this, so we know that at least works. I may have to change up the uh, wiring to the new transformer. Uh, the transformer on this one is actually intended for push-pull operation rather than single-ended, and push-pull transformers don't usually like being driven this way. So, but this was the only low wattage transformer I could find that didn't come from Hammond and didn't cost an arm and a leg. So, you, you use what you have available to you, and this was cheap, and it works, and it's not like I'm putting it in, you know, some really nice Scott or, I don't know, really fancy Zenith or anything. I don't really feel bad if it's not perfectly matched to it. This, this transformer is meant for uh, 6F6s, 45s, 42s, so we're got it hooked up to a 42, so it should be more than adequate to drive this, and the output impedance is pretty darn close to what the voice coil is looking for. So I think that's good enough for now. The next step will be uh, installing the new electrolytics in their mounting points, and then going through and replacing all the resistors, and then seeing if we can actually get this thing to receive broadcasts, or at the very least pick up signals from my generator.